This is Jason's Electronics Repair. Welcome to my ER. Today we are going to try to make a short informative video on power supplies. And of course, you know, Freddy the Teddy's in the corner. So say, hey, Freddy. Oh, wait, you can't. You're tied up and duct taped. My bad. So power supplies. Um, good friend of the channel, um, Wayne Noob UK Repairs um, or Repairs UK. Um, he is an up-and-comer, and he's learning the field. Has a great YouTube channel. Check it out. If I remember, I will put a link in the description. But a fantastic, got fantastic. Oh, words so difficult, Freddie. This is your fault. So, anyways, he's a fantastic guy, and um, I want to help him out because he he's getting a new power supply, and I want to give him the ins and outs of using a power supply. Um, in general, and then also to um, boot a switch um, for a battery, um, simulating a battery. So I'm, I'm going to go over that. Um, he already has the cable for the battery, but I'm going to go over that anyways. So power supply. So if you are doing electronics, I recommend a linear power supply. Um, I prefer a three output linear power supply, but a single output linear power supply um, is, is useful. Um, what you see on the screen now is my singlet SPD3303XE. It is a three output power supply, linear, it's very heavy, very bulky, uh, very accurate, and it, it does the job very well. Um, one of the big things about a linear and switch mode power supply is um, setting current. With these linear supplies, you you basically um, if we look here on channel one, um, this channel up here on the left, let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see what I'm talking about here. So this channel one right here, it's at 4.6 volts, two amps um, is what it's set to. If I turn it on, the amps will go down to zero because it's not, you know, there's nothing connected. Um, this can all be done on the interface on the unit itself, but it's easier for me to show you this way. The only difference is um, on the unit itself, you use a knob or a button to increase the, the voltage or current, and then you, on here, you're just going to enter the number. So um, as you can see, I got it set to 4.6 volts, which is um, which is good for a, a battery, um, 4.2. Um, if you're doing a switch, you know, we can say 4.2, I do 4.6, but we could do 4.2, and then we hit set, and then that's our voltage. Now our current um, is currently set at two amps. Um, that's what I, I pretty much deal with. Um, if you if you if you worried about it, you can do it 1.5 amps and set that, and you see that it sets it. With the linear supply, this is how you set the current. You input the current with the unit off, and it 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 sets it. So then when I turn it on, it's not drawing any current, so it's going to go to zero, and my power rating is going to go to zero. So that's basically setting voltage and current. Uh, multiple outputs, same difference. You can do that. Some have, like mine has a third dedicated output at 2.5, 3.3, or 5 volts at a 3.2 amp max um, setting that can't be adjusted or seen on the, on the display. Um, we're going to get back to this um, when we watch a switch boot, but let's talk about the um, cables that I use. Now, I'm going to put this back up here like this. Now, I use um, these customizable um, sleeve um, multimeter um, banana jacks. They're designed to plug into a multimeter because they're shielded. I find shield is safer. And these are stackable. And they come just like this with no wires attached. You solder the wire on and you assemble them and you have a set of cables. I have a set for my battery board for the Nintendo Switch, but I, I don't recommend doing it that way. I am a a stickler for um, cables, custom cables. Um, if you are using the shielded um, do-it-yourself, you can either cut the shielding off to plug into the power supply, or you can get these um, shielded to banana adapters. That's what I use because I like the shielded so I can... Also plug them in my meter and they're safer. But um, all you really need is one cable like this. So this is a 
banana jack cable that I made, and then it has a uh, five millimeter um, DC um, uh, jack on it, barrel jack. And um, when you have this, you can make a switch cable that has the female version of this, and you can just plug in different cables. And then you can also get units like this that have um, that plug onto the uh, barrel jack, and you can um, power many, many, many different devices off of um, one cable. So um, I got these when I bought a backup power supply for um, laptops and computers for when hurricanes come. So it came with all the adapters for all the different um, things. So um, I'm sure you can buy those somewhere. I don't have links for those. And if you ask, I'm not going to be able to help you. So that would be the two cables that, that I recommend that that you need. And um, you're going to be like, Jason, what, what, what about voltage injection? Like, what do I do? How do I work that with voltage injection? Well, vo voltage injection is cables you already have. So if you have a set of multimeter cables, like I do here, these are my voltage injection cables. So I have a set of multimeter cables like this that I can, again, plug in with my little adapters. I can plug these into my, my power supply. And then, um, as you see on the screen, I could inject 4.2 volts, and, if it, and it can draw up to 1.5 amps. Um, if you're going to inject voltage, I recommend lower than what the rail says it can take and a lower amperage. And then if it, um, if you can't find the short at a lower amperage, raise the amperage up a little bit um, to see if you can find it that way. But that is um, voltage injection. I'm not going to demonstrate voltage injection. Um, that's a whole separate topic on its own. This is just getting familiar with the power supplies. So that covers a linear power supply. Let me talk about a switch mode power supply real quick. So with a switch mode power supply to set the current, you need to turn the, <coughs> turn the output on and you need to ground your probes together. And then it will, then you can use your current knob to set the current. And then when you unhook them, then you can use it and your current is set. Um, Switch mode power supplies are that way. Just one of the reasons I don't like them is because setting current can be very difficult. Um, the potentiometers that are used for adjusting can be um, can get dirty very easily in a workshop, and then they can stick. Um, you bump the table, and you shoot up by like two volts or a bunch of amps. So I, I don't recommend switch mode power supplies. Um, you know, they're di it's dirty power. It's a switching power, so it's noisy. And um, linear supplies are much better, and they're more adjustable. So let's um, let's take a look at this um, battery board here. So I'm going to um, I'm going to hook this up to channel one, which you can see on the screen. Um, it's a little small, but it's at 4.2 volts and 1.5 amps. Um, I'm going to plug it in here, negative to negative. So I have my battery board here. I'm going to turn my battery board on. And the first thing I want to do is see that it's drawing no current. That's good. And then I want to turn on my meter. I'm in DC current mode. And I want to check the check to see that I'm getting the 4.2 volt, which is going to be smaller because of the drop across the cable. But we're going to check it. So I'm getting 4.2 volts. You can see how accurate my supply is. Very little drop across the lines. 4.2 volts. So now I have 4.2 volts. So I know this is a switch battery. Freddie, keep it, keep it down. We're busy here. Stop struggling. So we know that this is a good battery. So what I can do is I can take this switch that I know boots and a power cable. And let's just hook this up. And there's two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you both ways of doing this. So I'm going to hook this power cable up. It doesn't have a latch on it. So I'm going to hope it works. And we're going to watch the current. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this one. 
hide that one. I'm going to bring in this one. Well, not that one. That one. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to move it over here. So there you go. So you can see I'm at 4.2 volt zero current throw. So now if I hook this up to here, I'll hook this up like we are going to hook it up, I promise you. So we're going to hook this up. Make your cables longer, guys. Um, so as you can see, it's not drawing any current. Um, we can check to see if we still have our battery voltage, which we should. Yep, still got our 4.2 volts there. Now I'm going to press this power button here, and we should see the current do something. See, there it goes. It's booting. So there's my boot sequence. You can see the current going up and down. And that is um, that is booting. So that's what a normal boot sequence looks like. Every power supply is different, so it's going to be an accuracy of the current. I'm working on mapping it with my current power supply. But this is booting. Now, that was me plugging in a power ribbon and, and booting it that way. There is another way of booting it. And I will, I will unhook the, the power. Pull out my thing, um, power cable. I'll plug this back in again, no current draw. And then I will take a USB C cable, plug this in. Now, this meter should turn on, it should then turn off. So, yeah, we, we, it's booting. So, there it goes. So, it booted. So, we can unplug this, and now it's booting off the power supply. So there's two different ways to boot the switch with the switch cable. Um, I always recommend checking you have the 4.2 volts at the cable when you plug it in. Um, a lot of times if you, um, let, let me turn this off and then I'll show you, I'll show you what, I, what I mean from what I'm talking about. A lot of times if you come to this and you turn off the power supply and you read it, and it reads zero volts, which you're going to see here. It's going to read zero volts. So I'm going to hold this on there, and I'm going to press the power button. I'm going to turn on the supply. So as you can see, I turned on the supply, and I'm still getting no voltage. That's because I there was no voltage. Should I read this right? Yeah, so I'm not getting power. It says I'm getting 4.2 volts, but I'm not. So in order to solve that issue, you need to plug it in to a Nintendo Switch like that. Plug it into there. And then plug in a charger and wait about 5 to 10 seconds. And it will wake up the battery. The battery is now woke woke up that um, cable so now I should have the 4.2 volts there yep 4.2 volts now what I recommend so you don't have to do that um, so you don't have it do that to you I recommend unplugging it from the switch unplugging it from the power supply and then turning off your power supply um, that's how I do it, and then just to hook it back up, plug it in, turn on your power supply, check your voltage, all that good stuff. All this is Rufus approved, guys. Rufus, the Alicorni, says, pay attention, ready, don't move, and you can do it too. So power supplies, they're not scary things. Um, you, you, you can work through them. Um, a lot of them have way more options than are necessary for repairing simple items. Um, just like meters, um, my meter does things that most people's meter doesn't do. I try not to use those features on videos because people don't normally have the type of equipment that I have. But most linear power supplies work in the fashion that I just described with the setting of the current. Switch mode power supplies are different. You have to ground the, the you have to short the supply, set the current, and then you're good to go. But that is going to do it for this video, guys. Um, I hope that it was informative and you guys understood everything. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll try to get to it. Um, and if you could, share the video, like, subscribe. 
all that good stuff. It really helps out the channel. We hit 2,000 subscribers. I'd like to do better. I'd like to offer more content and um, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching, and have yourself a fantastic day. Please, loving cow, please, please, please. Freddy, knock it off.